This is so insane to me that this is just being completely normalized and accepted in the equestrian community. If you ever see a horse that looks like this or breeders doing stuff like this, it immediately needs to be called out and these people should be banned. They absolutely should before they start creating horses that have serious facial abnormalities that really inhibit their ability to breathe and function properly like a normal horse. Hey bitch and welcome back to another video. I'm ugh. I was gonna say I was excited for this video, but I just can't. I can't get there. You know, I don't like lying to you guys. I don't like putting on a face. When I come into videos, I want you guys to know what my mood is just right out of the gate. I love you guys. I love making these videos and spreading awareness, but you know, it's appropriate to not be happy. Anger is an emotion that we all experience and it's okay. a topic that just bothers me to my very core and this is something that really needs to be talked about because it's so heavily overlooked in the equestrian community I feel like this is becoming normalized and I don't want it to become normalized as a future veterinarian as you guys know I am in vet school this really worries me we're talking about not just brachycephalic dogs we are also talking about overbreeding and selective breeding of horses, more specifically Arabians, because there is a new horse that's been around for a few years now that is considered the most desirable Arabian looking Arabian. We'll get into that in a little bit, okay? <laughs> Overbreeding or selective breeding, as a lot of people like to call it, is a serious issue, not just among horses, but also among dogs, cats, and other animals that are being selectively bred for certain qualities. A lot of selective breeding is very unethical because it causes dogs or cats or any other species of animal to have a lot of health complications. Technically, all Scottish folds suffer from FOCD. FOCD is a progressive, painful condition that has a wide range of symptoms. Severely affected cats have shortened, thickened limbs and tails, deformed toes, and overall reduced mobility. Selective breeding usually takes place when people are trying to enhance or change the look of a certain animal drastically. A perfect example of selective breeding is brachycephalic dogs. If you don't know what brachycephalic dogs are, let me give you an example. Brachycephalic airway obstructive syndrome is a pathological condition affecting short-nosed dogs and cats, which can lead to severe respiratory distress. There are four different anatomical abnormalities that contribute to this disease, all of which occur more commonly in brachycephalic breeds. All of these components make it more difficult to breathe in situations such as exercise, stress, or heat, and animals with these abnormalities are also unable to take deep, fast breaths to blow off carbon dioxide. This leads to distress and further increases respiratory rates and heart rates, creating a vicious cycle that can quickly lead to life-threatening situations. Brachycephalic airway obstructive syndrome is a side effect or symptom of selective breeding. We have specifically bred dogs to look this way, and it's not only cruel and inhumane, but it's also unethical. All of these dogs have serious health complications and are subjected to years and years, if not their entire life, of medical work and surgeries, etc. These dogs do not live a good quality of life. And the reason I bring up brachycephalic dogs is because this is the perfect example. There are many other examples of selective breeding gone wrong, but I think this one is the perfect example of selective breeding gone wrong. If you don't know who L. Ray Magnum is, which that is just the dumbest name I've ever heard in my life, 
This is possibly the ugliest horse that I have ever seen being bred, which I think is so funny that they're talking about how this horse is worth millions of dollars. This is literally the ugliest horse I've ever seen, and this horse looks like it has serious facial and airway obstructions and abnormalities. It's honestly unbelievable how unethical this horse looks, and there's a lot of other Arabians specifically that are following down this pathway of becoming more and more cartoon-like looking, and this is not okay. We are literally doing the same thing to horses as what we did to brachycephalic dog breeds. So I wanted to read a few articles and kind of discuss what's going on with this because this is just wild. This is so insane to me that this is just being completely normalized and accepted in the equestrian community. If you ever see a horse that looks like this or breeders doing stuff like this, it immediately needs to be called out and these people should be banned. They absolutely should before they start creating horses that have serious facial abnormalities that really inhibit their ability to breathe and function properly like a normal horse. The Arabian horse is easy to recognize. The dished face and slender throat latch are characteristics of the horse breed. However, a young Arabian horse called El Rey Magnum has raised concerns among veterinarians. Concerns over breed standards exist in all sorts of domestic animal breeds. This happens when the search for an ideal look or function overcomes functionality and some sometimes even the welfare of an animal. We see this in dogs, cats, and sometimes horses. A young Arabian horse, El Rey Magnum, caused controversy in the veterinarian world back in 2017 due to an extreme dish to its face, a trait unique to the breed. The colt raised concerns as veterinarians believed his extremely dished face to be harmful. Such extreme breeding can cause breathing problems in young horses. Unlike dogs, horses can't breathe through their mouths. A potential blockage in their airway could lead to serious problems. So I think this is really important to acknowledge because one of the reasons why brachycephalic dogs, in my opinion, have lasted as long as they have is because dogs can also breathe through their mouth. If brachycephalic dog breeds could only breathe through their nose, they would all be dead. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm not even saying that exaggerating. They would, they would absolutely all be dead. Frenchies would not be around. A lot of bulldogs would not be around. Even some boxers that have really short muzzles. It just wouldn't happen. Furthermore, like most animal breeds, the Arabian may suffer from congenital defects, as some even fatal. The risk, however, comes from accepting what the vets see as defects as necessary and welcome breed characteristics. The Arabian horse's typical dished face is one of the most iconic characteristics of the breed. The shape helps the horse breathe in its original desert environment where the air is dry. Combined with large, wide nostrils, it enhances the airflow into the lungs, which gives the horse famous endurance. The Arabian horse's ability to breathe is a characteristic of that horse breed and their ability to be amazing endurance horses. So that's why it's just so unbelievable that anybody would want to selectively breed a horse designed for its breathing and ability to run long distances to have a very obstructed airway to minimize that capability and characteristic of the breed. It's just insane. British veterinarian Tim Greet believes El Rey's nose might impede his breathing. In his view, El Rey would not be able to cope with exercise. The major concern comes with breeding for appearances rather than function. Yes, absolutely. I mean, this is definitely for appearances and not functionality. Where will it end? Is it really so bad for a horse to look like a horse, not a cartoon character? I mean, that's absolutely true. This horse 100% resembles a cartoon character. It is not bred this way for functionality or even for the horse's own comfort. This is bred like this for humans because humans like the way that this looks and it's honestly absurd. American veterinarians who examined the colt claim he has no breathing problems and no health issues. Also, Doug Leadley, the owner of El Rey Magnum, claims he has no issues. Well, guess what? He's not going to tell people if the colt has issues, even if the colt had issues, right? Like, they're not going to tell people that because they want to breed this horse. That's the only reason why they bred the horse to look that way is to make a lot of money off of him. And I want us to examine a little bit a horse's nasal cavity and basically the anatomy of a horse's face. So as you can see, 
Horses can only breathe through their nasal cavity, which goes down their trachea. It's extremely important to not obstruct a horse's nasal cavity. That's also why it's important why people take measures on placing halters properly on horse faces, on placing bridles properly on the horse's face, on placing flash nose bands properly, etc., etc., etc. We take so many steps and precautions to make sure that anything that's on a horse's face is placed properly, and that's because horses only have one way of breathing. They cannot breathe out their mouth like you and I can, only their nose. When you obstruct a horse's nasal cavity and you make it half the size or a third of the size, just very meshed down, like what you see with L. Ray Magnum. You are limiting and inhibiting that horse's ability to breathe. It is not just inhumane, it is cruel. And I don't know how many times I have to say that to get it through people's minds. L. Ray Magnum's is literally half, or if not a third smaller than a standard horse's nasal cavity. And it's not just L. Ray Magnum. I've seen a lot of Arabians that have nasal cavities that look like this now because it's becoming trendy and this is so horrible this is so horrible and a lot of people are going to say well he's not an endurance horse he's just halter it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you take away a horse's ability to breathe just like you take away a brachycephalic dog's ability to breathe or cat's ability to breathe it is cruel and it's inhumane I definitely question the ethics of this horse and this horse's ability to breathe. I definitely look at this horse and see that the nasal cavity is obstructed, just like you would see with any other animal in any other breed that had a severely shortened snout or airway, nasal cavity, etc. So this is a problem. And anytime you see this, it deserves to be called out because these people need to stop. Somebody needs to stand up and say, hey, this is wrong and it needs to stop. Because unlike all other animals that we've done this to, horses will actually start dropping dead like flies once we start inhibiting their ability to breathe, because unlike other animals, that's the only way they can breathe. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I love you, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!